Hey guys, I'm back. So today I'm going to be explaining the Doppler effect and redshift, which are really just two names for the same thing. So we'll get started here with the Doppler effect, okay? You're probably familiar with this effect, and you may not even know it. So say you're standing there on the street, and an ambulance comes uh, going by, and you hear the siren, and you know, it gets, um, it starts off higher pitch as it's coming towards you, and it gets lower pitch as it's going away from you, uh, sort of like this uh, sound clip here. So, um, sort of like that. So you noticed how as it approached the, the person in this, who was recording this, I guess, the uh, sound got higher um, as it uh, at, was at its highest point when it was farthest away, and as it approached the person, it got lower. Um, and then as it got, went past the person, it got even lower. So why does this happen? Well, if we assume an observer here standing on the side of the street, and we have the ambulance here. So say this ambulance was just still for a minute, okay? Because that's, um, this way you're going to get this sort of true frequency, okay? What, what frequency, sound waves are a sine wave of pressures in the air, okay? So they're, they're sine waves and they're pressures in the air. So if we just mark a line at each peak of the sine wave, because we can, that's the pressure, right? If, if the frequency is one kilohertz, that means there's 50 pressure waves, uh, sorry, 1,000 pressure waves per second coming out of the ambulance. So there's a millisecond difference between these pressure waves, okay? And these pressure waves gum, come out from the sirens uh, at a millisecond apart in the ambulance, and they reach the person uh, who's uh, hearing them at a millisecond apart, and then their ears hear it as sound waves because the peaks on the sine waves are um, millisecond apart. Now, um, so, so that's how you get the one kilohertz sine wave. So that's when it's ambulance is still. But when the ambulance is moving, right, coming towards you, what happens? Well, now that it's coming towards you, say at this point exactly right here in time, okay, the ambulance releases a pressure wave. Okay, so this pressure wave starts to leave at the speed of sound, okay, 700 and something miles per hour around that. I'm not sure of the exact figure, but it's around 700 miles per hour. Okay, so this sound wave starts to leave the ambulance at 700 miles per hour. Now what happens is between the, uh, it takes a millisecond, um, the speakers wait a millisecond for the next pressure wave to come, because that's what a one kilohertz sine wave is. But the thing is that the ambulance will have traveled towards you in that one millisecond. So if you were right here, right, right here, the ambulance was right here at the first pressure wave. It releases that first pressure wave and it starts to come towards you. The ambulance has actually moved slightly in that millisecond um, between the time that the next pressure wave is released. And this means that the second pressure wave is actually going to be closer to the first pressure wave because the object has moved towards you um, in, um, has moved towards you uh, between the two pressure waves. So you have, you know, the first pressure wave comes out at you and the ambulance moves forward and then there's a second pressure wave because you remember when it was still there was a, a millisecond spacing and since there was an exact time spacing there'd be a space spacing as well like these waves are, you know, X amount of micrometers or whatever apart. Um, but when you have an ambulance coming towards you, the pressure waves are actually slightly closer in time and closer in space together because the ambulance has released the second pressure wave at a closer point to yourself. So the waves sort of collapse in on each other, sort of like this animation here or set of pictures or whatever. So that's why that, the, the sound is um, higher when it comes towards you, okay? And then when it's right at you, the sound is going to be the true sound because, as we said before, when it's right at you, it's it, when it's not actually moving towards you or away from you. If it if it stayed at the same distance from you, the sound waves would be the same because they wouldn't because the ambulance wouldn't have moved towards you or away from you, uh, making the sound waves closer together. So then, when it starts to go away from you, you notice it, it gets higher and higher and higher, and then as it goes away from you, it gets lower and lower and lower. Okay. And why does that happen? Well, because if, if say you're, you're here and the ambulance is here, okay, it releases a pressure wave, right? And in the millisecond between this pressure wave and the next pressure wave, it's actually moved away from you more in that millisecond. So it releases the second pressure wave farther away. So these pressure waves are now actually farther away. So say, I'll, I'll exaggerate the effect so you can see it, but say uh, if, it, if the ambulance just stays still here and you're here, it's going to release this pressure wave. This pressure wave is going to move, uh, you know, 
however far uh, 700 miles per hour would move in one millisecond, and then it's going to release the next pressure wave, and they're going to be X amount of uh, distance apart, or one millisecond apart. But, say the ambulance is moving, so it starts out, it releases the first pressure wave here, it starts to move towards you at 700 miles per hour. The ambulance moves, however far the ambulance is going to move away from you in one second. It's not a very uh, noticeable amount of um, distance, however... Yeah, you know, when we're dealing with such small distances as in sound uh, and light in a minute, it, it makes a big difference. So the ambulance actually moves away from you, and then it releases the pressure wave. So in reality, these pressure waves are, are farther apart, So uh, and you know when there's fewer, so if they're farther apart, there's fewer peaks per second, so the frequency drops, and, it, and, and as the ambulance goes away from you, it's going to drop more and more because it's farther away, and the pressure waves are farther apart. Okay, so that's that's the Doppler effect. It's It's... The tendency, or not the tendency because it happens all the time, but I guess um, when something comes towards you, uh, a, any, kind, any type of frequency that it's emitting, sound, uh, even light, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, coming towards you, the frequency will increase because the pressure wave sort of gets, or any waves, uh, talking about it in a general sense, get stacked on top of each other because the object is actually moved closer to you in the time between its, when it's released the two waves. And um, the same holds true for when it's going away from you, is that it's actually gone away uh, in the same amount of time between the waves, so they're farther apart, so the frequency drops. So when something comes towards you, the frequency increases, and when it's going away from you, the frequency decreases, uh, for reasons that I just said. Now, everybody's familiar with this with sound. You know, the ambulances, the, the um, even, you know, if you bike past a... Um, post, you can hear that um, whoosh coming from your chain, um, chain on your bike reflecting off the post. You can, you, you can hear it a lot. It's, it's fairly common. Almost everybody knows this effect. They just may not be able to put a name on it and uh, explain it the way I just did. So um, this, this also happens with light. You can also do the same thing with light, which is how, the, how they can measure the speed of galaxies moving towards or away from our reference point, the Earth is a reference point, because that's where they're measured. Okay, so um, when this uh, Doppler effect is occurring with light, we call it a redshift, because, as you know, the frequency of the light, uh, whereas sound, frequency is pitch. Light, frequency is color. So green is a different color from red, and here you can see the frequency spectrum. Okay, red is a low frequency, uh, infrared being an even lower frequency, but we'll stick to visible colors here. Red is a low frequency, and um, what is that? I think blue is the highest one um, in the visible light spectrum, and um, the, the names for this phenomenon are based on the visible light spectrum. So you have red at the low end, red is the low frequency. You have blue at the other end, blue is a very high frequency. Uh, relative, if you're talking just uh, visual light relative. So what happens is, the same thing happens when something is coming towards you. Let's say to, to do it, because you're never going to measure a redshift um, with an ambulance because it's, it's simply uh, some unmeasurably small quantity. Um, but we can measure the redshift with, um, say, galaxies, okay? So there's a galaxy, and this is Earth. And this galaxy is going towards Earth at quadrillions of miles per hour, okay? Uh, very fast. So this galaxy is releasing light. The stars are releasing light, and it's coming straight towards us. So this light is the same thing. A light is a sine wave. And so if we put a line at each peak to represent the sort of photons coming out, you can see that the, the um, galaxy over here will release... Um, a light wave, a photon, and then the photon will speed off at the speed of light, um, 300,000 meters per second, um, and then it's going to, and in the time uh, that the light is, that the, the light has left, so, you know, I'm not quite sure of the um, exact numbers for this, but I know that, um, you know, visible light has a wavelength of nanometers, you know, 500 or something nanometers for green, I believe. So uh, we'll just take 500 as, as an example. Uh, I, have no, I have no clue uh, what color that actually is, but just as an example, okay? So this, this light is going to... Um, there, there's 500 nanometers between um, 
uh, photons, or it's, it's going to be easier to use time, but there's some specific amount of time between these two photons, okay? So this galaxy is going to release, the stars are going to release the light, the galaxy is going to release the uh, one light, so we'll just draw this as a wave, because light is, light is a wave and a particle. And then um, wave is going to speed off the speed of light, and between, so, you know, whatever time, some made-up time that's constant for the frequency of light that's emitting, the galaxy is going to have moved towards us. And in this case, since it's coming at us so fast, it's moving towards us quite a lot. Now, not, to, not that this phenomenon, you know, the Doppler effect is going to be much more so because it's millions of miles per hour, because light's frequency is so high, it's so insanely high that it um, sort of cancels the effects, but it is measurable. We do measure this um, redshift. So what's going to happen is the same thing, the, the, the Doppler effect is going to happen, is the, the light waves are actually going to come close together and increase the frequency. Okay? So, um, and they're going to become, increase the frequency, so when we hit, they hit us, they're going to be a higher frequency, and thus they're going to be more blue. Okay? So a galaxy speeding towards us millions of miles per hour, uh, it's going to... Um, the uh, light waves are going to be closer together because between the time that it releases the first wave um, and the second wave, it's going to have moved closer, so the waves are going to move closer together, and the frequency is therefore going to increase, and it's going to be more blue. Now, it's called redshift for a reason. That's because when we look at anything, uh, we observed a redshift, not a blue shift. This is because the universe is expanding. So if we do this in the reverse way, the galaxy is speeding away from us at millions of miles per hour, it's going to release the light and between, in, in this, the frequency of the light, you know, the whatever specific amount of time, it's going to have moved away and the pressure waves are going to, so not pressure waves, I'm still on the sound, the light waves are going to be farther apart when a galaxy is speeding away from us. So it happens with light just as in sound. And it's going to be lower frequency when it reaches us because of the Doppler effect because the galaxy is speeding way, you know, really fast, really far away. And then, you know, the lower frequency means more red. So... That's where the name comes from, because when we look at anything in the sky, we see it's actually slightly more red. That's why it's called redshift, because everything has its color shifted towards red, because since the universe is expanding, everything is flying away from us at some astronomically high speed, and because it's flying away from us, the, the light waves get farther and farther apart, the frequency drops, the light becomes more red when we see it. And this isn't only, doesn't only happen with galaxies. Like I said, it happens with anything. If you run towards something, it's going to be a pure slightly more blue. If you run away from something, it's going to be slightly more red. Not that you can notice it. I don't believe any equipment that we have is actually sensitive enough to notice um, light, um, the Doppler effect or redshift with light at, at anything except millions and millions and billions of miles per hour that we observe in space. But telescopes actually do observe this redshift um, in everything. That's That's one of the main um, data points we have, uh, proofs we have that the universe is expanding is that everything is slightly more red. Uh, why is that? It's because it's flying away from us and the frequency drops due to the Doppler effect. So uh, that's redshift um, and the Doppler effect. I hope your uh, explanation was satisfactory and that you uh, learned something about uh, redshift, uh, the Doppler effect, why ambulances become more, uh, the frequency drops or increases, why things appear more blue or, or more red, um, something about light. So uh, thanks for watching.